This is the third night of revival here on our YouTube channel. These are not current services. They were recorded in December 2023 in Ogon State, Obeyakuta, Nigeria. Now let's join the service in progress. Hey, welcome, Liberty Markikabo. Our Minister Evangelist, David Bosch. Lord, Ajiri. You call the Minister of Lord. Lati Wajisho. Amen. Amen. You are welcome, sir. Ekabo, sir. Thank you, my brother. She are up in Thank you. God bless you. Amen. It is wonderful to be here. And we praise God for that. Hallelujah. 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 I appreciate my brother helping me this week. He is he, he is my mouth. He speaks my word. And I'm sure that's not easy. But I appreciate what he does for me. Turn with me to Isaiah. Chapter number 65. I'm so glad to have my wife here with me. I would love for you to pray for my wife. She has not been breathing very well. She has quite a bit of lung trouble. And last night and today has been very rough on her. But we believe God for miracles. Amen. Amen. We believe God works miracles. Miracles that we can see and miracles that we cannot see. And we believe God for miracles tonight. Isaiah chapter 65. Reading one verse tonight. Verse number 24. Here's what Isaiah said. And it shall come to pass. That before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Will you stretch your hands toward heaven? Ask the Lord to touch us in the preaching time. Father, I thank you for your blessing. It is an amazing privilege to stand before these people. These people are your people. They're your children. My brothers and sister what a privilege to stand before you lord would you speak to us tonight make your word come alive in us. help us to believe your word help us to receive your word and help us to respond to your word and believe that you are going to do miracles for us on these grounds tonight. In the name of Jesus, we say amen. I love this passage of scripture. It is a prophecy that Isaiah gave to his people. But it's not only to the people of Isaiah's day. It is a word for us today. Did you hear what it said? Before they 
called? Who's there? Who is he talking about? He's talking about God's people. He's talking about you. He's talking about me. Can you say this with me? He's talking about me. Yes, he is. He's talking about me. Before they call. Now, how do we call? We do not call him on the telephone. When, when I was just a boy, we sang a song in church. It talked about the royal telephone. But telephone to glory. And it was a good song. But we don't call him on the song. How do we call on God? We call on God in prayer. Can I say something to you tonight? The people of God are known as people of prayer. God forbid we would ever quit praying. We must pray. We must pray regularly. Praying in the morning. Praying in the afternoon. Praying at night. Praying during the night. In fact, the New Testament teaches us that we should pray without ceasing. You say, how can I do that? I've got to take care of my family. I've got to take care of my home. I've got to work a job. I've got to fix a meal. I've got to tend to my children. How can I always be praying? Now we ought to be on our knees in prayer or stretched out before God in prayer. It doesn't really matter what the position is. We ought to have times of prayer. But what about this praying without ceasing? It simply means you should always have an attitude of prayer. Prayer should never be far from our lips. Prayer should never be far from our heart. We should be a praying people. Can you say amen? We don't just pray when there is an emergency. We're not just people of prayer when we are sick. We ought to always be people of prayer. That is how we call on God. And this scripture is amazing. God said to us, Before you pray, God said, I will answer. That's not something we can do. Do you pick up your phone and say hello? Before it, before it rings? It has never been ringing? Yet you know someone is calling? None of us are that smart. But God is that smart. God said before you pray, I am already answering your prayer. I am preaching to you tonight. The answer is on the way. 
the thing you have been praying about the thing you have been talking to God about the answer to that problem is coming the answer to that problem is coming the answer is on the way hallelujah Right on praying, man of God. That's what you got to my Keep right on praying, woman of God. That's what you got to my Keep right on praying, child. That's what you got to my God. The answer is already on the way. We serve a God who is not like us. We are very limited in our knowledge. There are so many things that I do not know. And I have no way of knowing. Them. Sometimes we feel so prideful in our knowledge. I know something they don't know. And we are lifted up in pride. And really, we know so little. Is that right? We know so little. Some of you make me feel like I am very low in knowledge. I can only speak one language. And I cannot speak that very well. But many of you know at least two languages. You know much more than I do. And so I should realize that my knowledge is very limited. Some of you know what to do with an engine in a car. I know how to turn the car on. But I do not know much more than that. I am very limited. In a, in a few days, we are going to go to Lagos. We are going to wait in line. We're going to get on an airplane with two or three hundred other people. We're going to sit down on that airplane. Buckle our seat belts. And that airplane is going to fly. It's going to fly for 13 hours. Nearly 6,000 miles. And then by God's grace, it is going to safely land in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to get on another plane. And by God's grace, it is going to fly to Knoxville, Tennessee. But I have something to tell you. I have no idea how that plane flies. I don't know how it works. How does it get off the ground? There are no wings. There is only two strong engines pushing that plane. When I have made a paper airplane, have you ever made an airplane when you were child? We would always try to get up someplace high and fly that You know where my plane always went? Right down there. I cannot make a plane. I cannot fly a plane from me to you. 
Is that right? You are different in the morning sometimes than you are in the evening. If your day does not go well, it can change you. You can be so sweet, so kind, and then something bad happens. And we can be angry just like that. Am I preaching right? 
Brothers, am I preaching right? Should I ask your wives? Would they tell me that you can change quickly? Amen. Amen. Ladies in the choir, should I ask your husband? Can you change quickly? Speak to me. Can you change quickly? Yes, you can. We change. I'm not going to let you talk to my wife. I don't want her to tell any story. But we all change. But God is not like us. God never changes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God never changes. to think about God's goodness. Think about this a moment. When I was a young man, I visited a church in Ohio. And a man from Nigeria was there preaching. I did not get to meet him. I did not get to speak to him. But I never forgot him. Many years later, a man from Nigeria came to my revival. An American preacher brought him to revival. And they came to visit me before the service. He introduced this man as Reverend E. Ade Shabanke. And I remembered that name. I remembered a song that he had sung. Lord, send a revival to my soul. Lord, send a revival to my soul. Let your Holy Spirit Take control. Lord, send a revival to my soul. I remember that man. I was so glad to meet him. I could not get to him that night. But many years later, God brought him to me. After church that night, the pastor invited them to stay and to break bread with us. And so I got to visit with him for a while. I was asking him questions, getting to know more about him. And then he made a statement that I could hardly believe. He said, I want you and your wife and your daughter to come to Nigeria. And I laughed at him. I thought there was no way I could ever go to Nigeria. How could I ever have the money to go to Nigeria? How could I fly to Nigeria? Do you remember? I don't even know how a, fly, a plane works. I could not imagine getting on a plane as big as I am. And I was even bigger then. And flying all the way to Nigeria. And why would anyone want me in Nigeria? I don't have anything to say in Nigeria. And so I laughed at his suggestion. The very next day God by his goodness brought me together again with brother Shabanke and he told me I was serious when I asked you to come to Nigeria and I said I am sorry I thought you were telling a joke he said I am not 
choking. Lord wants you to come to Nigeria. And I said we will pray about it. And I parted ways. That night we began to talk about it. And all three of us felt like it was the Lord working. It was the Lord speaking. And so we came to Nigeria the very next year. And my life has been made so much better by coming to Nigeria. I have found a whole new family. Do you hear me? I have found a whole new family. I have found brothers and sisters that I dearly love and that I believe dearly love me and our lives have been made so much better by the goodness of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I see God's goodness in I said I see God's goodness in God brought us tonight. God put a word in my mouth. But he not only put a word in my mouth, he put an overwhelming love in my heart for his people, for my people here in Nigeria. I have had invitations to go to other nations in Africa. And someday I may go. But I have never felt what I feel right here in your nation with my friends, with my people. I say God is good. God brought you here. I said God brought you here. You are not here by accident. I said you are not here by accident. You are here by the design of God. Because God is good. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is glorious. God is mighty. God is powerful. The psalmist said, We go look up at the heavens, and the heavens declare, What do the heavens declare? The heavens declare the glory of God. Said that the earth where we live 
and is like a footstool. And it is almost nothing. Amen. Amen. If our God can make the heavens, then our God can do anything. Do you understand? Me? There is nothing too hard for God. I said there is nothing too hard for God. God is glorious. God is powerful. God is great. He can heal cancer. He can heal broken bones. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen a broken bone healed? I have. I crushed an elbow. And that night, the Lord healed me. Amen. 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 I remember a story. A testimony from an older sister. She told this over 30 years ago. And at that time, she was a very aged woman. And she told this testimony from when she was a young mother. So probably 100 years ago. She was in the field working with her husband. And somehow she fell. And she broke her leg. And it was a bad break. Bone had come out of the skin. Her skin was punctured from the bone. They had no doctor. And if, if they had had a doctor, they didn't have any money to pay a doctor. So they carried her back to the house. Some of the ladies came to her. They straightened her leg the best they could. They pushed the bone back into place. But they had no way to mend that bone. So they wrapped it tightly. And waited for God to do the work. She said that very night. Their church was in revival. She said, I want you to carry me to church. I'm sure that someone said to her, you should probably not go to church. She said, I'm going to church. And so she went to revival. And the spirit of the Lord was moving. And do you know what she did? She was was in the spirit I know no one you know me she began to dance in the spirit I said she began to dance in the spirit she was dancing she was leaping and her leg was healed the bone was healed she was an old lady when she told us that she had never forgotten God is glory. God is power. Do you hear me this evening? On these grounds and beyond this world, God is powerful. He is good and he is glorious. Amen. Amen. And he gave us a way to get to him. Oh no. Let it go. He gave us access to him. Man, no he is not closed off. Man, he is not behind a wall. Man, he is not in a prison. Man, he is available to us. He is not out of reach. The Bible said his ear is not heavy. His arm is not short. That he cannot say. God is available. 
The book of Hebrews said, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. And we can remove both of those knots and we can say very accurately, We have a high priest. We have a savior that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Oh, I'd love to preach to you tonight. God feels what you're feeling. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. God feels what you're feeling. Are you sick? He feels that feeling. Are you depressed? He feels that feeling. Are you in sorrow? Our God feels that Are you grieving? Our Savior feels that feeling. He has opened himself that we might have access to him. And the very next verse says, let us therefore come boldly because he feels our feelings. Let us go boldly to the throne of grace that we might find help in the time of need. Hallelujah! Grace in the time of need. He is available. He says you can call on me. He says you can pray to me. In fact, he said, ask. And you shall receive. And you shall receive. Amen. Amen. Seek. And he shall be found. Knock. And it shall be opened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask. Betty. Say it with me. Somebody ask Belly and you shall receive. Oh, Suba. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. Seek. Somebody walk in and you shall find. Oh, see. And what else? Oh, you go. Knock. Kaku. Somebody knock. Can you call Kaku? Knock on heaven's door. Call your Kwani. Kaku. And it shall. Oh, see, see for you. Open under you. Oh, see, see for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has given you access. He has given me access. In 2021, I was very sick with COVID. I had trouble breathing. I was using oxygen from a machine for almost one year. I could not catch my breath. I could not preach and travel for over seven months. I was very sick. And during that time, we called on God. Do you hear me? We called on God. And you, you walk. were calling on God for me. And you know, take for me. I said you, and you were calling on God for me. Take your for me. Friends all over America, already, America were calling on God for me. Take your for me. And God heard those prayers. Ben, your I said God heard those prayers. I am in Nigeria today. Preaching this message because he is a good God. Because he is a glorious God. And because he has opened us, he has made himself available to us. And the more we call, he answers. During that time, I would stand and pray. I would move my feet as if I was marching. I would walk 
Mamani. in one place calling out to God trying to exercise my muscles exercise my lungs and often I would sing I would sing songs to God my prayers would be songs to God trying to get my lungs into work I was trying to get my voice in shape when I preach like this every night this is what we do all the time we preach nearly every week of the year when you preach like this every night you must keep your voice in shape is that right preachers we must take care of our voice and so I try to take care of it. And I was trying those months to keep my voice in shape. And often I would sing this song. The answers on the way, this I know. Jesus said it. I believe it. And it is so. My heavenly Father knows our need. Oh my enemy! Before we pray, I Do you hear me? I would sing the heavenly Father knows our need. Oh my enemy! Before we pray, And the answer, I need is already on the way. Have you ever heard that song? That song is from 50 years ago. They sang that when I was a boy. The answer is already on the way. You say, is that scriptural? I say, yes. My text matches that song. Before they call, I will answer. Before they call, I ran across a story from Africa. There was an American woman. She was a medical doctor. She came to Africa in the 1950s. She was a young medical doctor. She went to the nation of the Congo. And she would tend to their physical needs. She was out in the villages. In the bush. And she would set up a clinic. And she would tend to their illness. And the people that came with her. Would preach the gospel. She would help their physical needs. And they would minister to the spirit do you understand me so you yeah. be and then I read an amazing story that happened. And I found this story with all different facts. But I finally found a video of this woman. She was an older woman. And she was telling this story. And so I wrote this down just like she told me. There came a day in her clinic that they needed two things desperately. She needed one thing to save a baby. Without this device, there was no way to save this baby. 
another thing that a little girl needed and so she met with her staff for daily prayer and she said I have a request I need these two items I must have one of them today before nightfall if I do not have this I do not think I can keep this baby alive and so they prayed they prayed for these needs and they went about their day late that evening they received a large shipping crate that had come all the way from England and so they brought it into their clinic and they began to take the lid off it was nailed shut. It had been nailed shut in England. And so they took the lid off. And it was full of medical supplies. And there was a list on top of the supplies. And that list had everything in that container. Laying on top of that list. There were two items. You know what they were? They were the two items they prayed for. But here's what I want you to see. That container was nailed shut and put onto a ship and it took five months do you understand me five months that to get to the Congo and then get to them if it left in January, January, February, March, April, May, five months. Do you know what I'm preaching to you? They prayed today. Five months before. And you also already said Now this part is my imagination. I imagine a little mother somewhere in England running toward the ship. Have you sent the container to the Congo yet? No, but we're nailing it shut right now. Please wait. No, ma'am. We cannot wait. We don't have time to add that. And I can see this little mother say to those men, I was praying today. God told me to go to the store and buy these two items and said they must go in that container. We will put him in the next container. God said, and container. Because God knows that doctor was not going to know about her need until five months later. God was already working. The answer, your answer, is on the way. I said your answer is on the way. Hallelujah. Tonight may be your night. I said tonight may be your night. I believe. Say it with me. I believe. I believe. I believe. The answer, it say it with me. Something with me. The answer, it is on the way. Oh, I don't know. The answer, it is on the way. Oh, I don't know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been.
been praying. You've been asking God for a miracle. And you wonder where he is. Why haven't you come? I was sick for seven months. I was using oxygen almost a year. But the Lord came. I said the Lord came. I'm here today. Because the Lord came. I said the Lord came. There are people in the U.S. that told me very tenderly. Maybe you should not go this year. Maybe you should stay in the U.S. You're still not breathing properly. Maybe it would be better if you did not go. They told me that because they love me. They told me that because they're concerned about it. But I felt in my spirit that I was supposed to be here. And I am preaching to you with full breath. I said I am preaching to you with full breath. Because the answer was already on the way. Hallelujah. I feel like the Lord has touched me. I said, I feel like the Lord has touched me. Why do you mean that? I feel like the Lord is going to touch you.
Touch my brothers. Touch my sisters. Lift your hands all over you show. Raise your voices. And do you suck it? Raise your voices. And do you suck it? Hallelujah. And keep it sucking. Hallelujah. And keep it Let's go, 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 let's go